this meeting is Central Vermont Public Safety Authority board meeting, and it's gonna to come to order at 7.03. This meeting is remote only, which means the public body is meeting electronically only and consistent with the temporary position provisions of Act 78. There is no designated physical space where the public may attend. Please note that while we are striving to provide means for attending remotely to participate in the public comment period, there may be technical difficulties or reasons that otherwise prevent or interrupt remote public participation. Please note that when votes are taken, if indeed it is not unanimous, there will be a roll call. And as required by the open meeting law for the fully remote meeting, that we need to take a roll call of all the members participating as well as those attending publicly. So I will start first, uh, Donna Bate. I'm an at-large representative. Uh, my officer is going first, Doug, you next. Samantha. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> I thought I was next in line, but he can go. Jim Ward, Barry City representative. Uh, Justin. Justin Dreschler, Montpelier representative. Thank you. Uh, Kim Cheney. Kim Cheney, at large member. Okay, and Mel. Mel Chambell, Barry City representative. Thank you. And Deputy Chief uh, Joe's Allsworth. Yeah, Deputy Chief Joe Allsworth, Bear City Fire Department. Yeah, having you say it, make sure that we can hear you and you can hear us. That's one of the requirements. Thank you. Uh, Dave, is that Rubella? Rubacaba. Rubacaba. Say it again. Why do I keep messing it up? You know, you used to come to live meetings. You see, I didn't have to say it. I know. I'm sorry, Donna. Uh, Dave Rubacaba, Barry City Fire. Thank you. Uh, Doug Brent. Good evening, uh, Doug Brent, Chief of Barry City Fire. Thank you. Uh, David Delcor. David Delcor from the Times Argus. And Stephen. Uh, Stephen's on the phone. You Thank you. Yeah, I just unmuted Stephen Whitaker and again requesting the meeting be recorded in accordance with law. Duly noted. Thank you. Please unmute yourself. Uh, Doug Brent, you also need to be mute. It really helps everyone's connections if we stay mute when we're not talking. Thank you. And every time we speak, again, just say your name. All right. First thing on the agenda is the agenda. I uh, have two things that I missed that I would uh, like to. Yes. Me, I did not really introduce myself. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes. I know everybody is going to be missing that important detail. But first of all, I'm happy to see Dave here. And, um, and my name is Doug Hoyt. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a board member from the city of Montpelier. Thank you. All right, so now we will talk about the agenda. The two things I have to add is Jim Ward made a request for us to consider contributing money towards buying some fire equipment. And he would like to be put on the agenda. I'm gonna put him in as 4A between uh, Mel's introduction and the Televi uh, contract. And then the other one is open meeting, other, uh, violation appeal to the head of the agency under other business. Anything else that someone would like added to the agenda that was missed? Okay. No, if there's I no else. Yes, Kim? Donna, I'm not sure I understand the technology of recording, but. I think I understand that you as the host can record this. Uh, Kim, that's a, for another discussion. I'm sorry, well, we're talking about the agenda right now. I'm talking about the agenda. You'd like uh, to add, the recording is gonna be discussed under how we organize our meetings in the future. All right. Okay. So if there's no other additions or objections, the agenda as modified with those two items added will be accepted. We're now open for public comment of anything that's not on the agenda. 
Okay, next is approval of March 10th minutes. Any addition to those? Or I, I have comments, Madam Chair. Excuse I me, Stephen. I couldn't unmute myself as quick as you wanted to skip by me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You want to go back to public, public comment? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. So as a news item, there is none of the 11 million either in the Senate or the House bill available to Montpelier. Uh, uh, Stephen, we're going to talk about state house updates and funding uh, number six. Do you have something else to talk about? I do. Uh, I'm going to start very clearly here. We need new leadership. We need strict adherence to public records and open meeting laws. We should need to adhere to the charter and hire a director, and we sh shall conduct an annual audit. We cannot have a chair who undermines CVPSA frequently offers to make it dissolve or disappear. Uh, that's a violation of the oath. I don't see how a chair can honor both an oath to be a Montpelier city councilor and be dissolving, trying to dissolve CVPSA to the benefit of Montpelier at the same time. So the board members, for instance, for example, telling the clerk that the clerk cannot share a public record without permission or telling board members they cannot discuss items or share records with other board members or misrepresenting the, her personal points of view as if they were CDPSAs when CDPSAs board has never discussed or agreed to those positions. So we need to turn this organization into a regional, accountable, transparent, credible organization responsible to its member and responsive to its members and clients. And that is clearly we've consumed an inordinate amount of time responding to public records, open meeting violations, even tonight. And that's just not sustainable. Okay, anything else, Stephen? Not until later when the topics come up. Okay, thank you. Would you please mute yourself? So now we'll go to minutes of March 10th. Any edits to them? Uh, Justin, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just for the minutes, I just wanted to check the uh, for the approval of the agenda. I missed it. We amended to add Jim Ward's thing to that. Yes, I'm sorry. It was okay. a, it was amended to have Jim Ward as 4A, yep. and a, appeal to for violations of rec, public records rules under other business. Okay, thanks. That's it. Okay, no, always check. Thank you. All right. If there's no edits to the March 10th minutes, I'll entertain a motion. Jim. I tried to raise my hand. Oh, okay. Uh, J Jim, you're talking, but we're not hearing you. Remember to say your name when there. you start talking. This Can you hear me? Kim, Kim yes. Uh, yeah, Kim just a minute. Jim was in front of you, but we'll get you next, Kim. Okay. Uh, Jim. Jim Ward. Uh, I'll, <clears throat> I'm sure we'll discuss this when, when we have the uh, funding request on the budget, but just to correct the record, the request last week was $3,995, and the minutes uh, <clears throat> mistakenly quoted the total price as the request of the mom. That's, I'm uh, glad that's, you caught that. That was on my list. Good. Give me the exact amount again. I know Justin will need it, but so that we're, request, we're requesting is $3,995. $3,995. Okay. Great. Kim. Um, not to be too picky, but um, householder's name is not spelled correctly in the board members. An attendance? Right. Okay, sure. It's household, not householder. So yes. I think they should okay. spell, his, spell his name no. correctly. Yep, we'll get that corrected. All right, entertain a motion to pass the minutes with the addition, the change of the financial number to 3995 and the correction to Brent's name spelling. 
I'll second. Doug Hoyt, I'll second. Justin, you got that? Okay. All in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Any opposed? Good. It passed. Thank you very much. Um, Mel, what would you like us to know about you? And your interest in public safety. Um, pardon me? And your interest in public safety. Well, I'm sure you volunteered for and foremost. You were not arm twisted into this. I actually was not arm twisted into this. Good. I I volunteered for it. Well, for a few reasons. I I do have some interest in it. I didn't know um, how complicated it is, and it seems like it's very complicated. So I'm probably going to be a listener today. I might be a listener for a while. Um, I'm on the Barry City Council, and I heard about this because Steve Whitaker mentioned it several times at several of our meetings. And so I thought, um, I'll just do it. I don't know where that came from. Okay. Let's, we've all started there at some point, so <laughs> you're more than welcome. Uh, next is Jim's request. You sent out a wonderful, um, piece for us to look at with links, what would you like for us to know in addition to that? You're, you're muted again, Jim. I want to apologize again for not being able to run the videos last month, but um, I hope you, those who are interested, had a chance to, to see them. Um, I, did, I guess is there any questions about the, the what we sent out? Are there any questions? Uh, Kim, do you have a question? I just have a comment. Um, okay. I thought the video was instructive, particularly the demonstration of the equipment. As a former state's attorney, I was a little nervous that some nefarious people would learn these techniques because it looks very efficient. But uh, I'm impressed and when the motion is made, I intend to support it, Jim. Thank you. Anyone else? So Doug, uh, Kim, you were saying you support it. Are you making a motion? Yes, I'll, I'll move that it be approval, but um, I would like to make one other comment. When you first introduced it, you said you were doing so because CVPSA uh, didn't seem to be doing anything. But the fact of the matter is CVPSA has set the entire agenda for the Twin City teams and all are thinking about where we go. It hasn't all been accepted, but it is, has been the motivating force. And I'm glad to have some money spent for training. And with Doug, uh, Brent, Brent's um, uh, support that it would really be useful for firefighters in our area. Um, and it, it seems obvious to me. Uh, I thank you for efforts to raise some money locally and I'm happy to have us contribute. So I'll move approval of the request. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. I just I, I just wanted to comment. Uh, I appreciate you bringing that up, Kim, because I uh, I think that CVPSA has um, put a lot of things on the table that have generated a lot lot of com uh, a lot of 
positive um, activity. What I was referring to is to the man on the street, so to speak, particularly the public safety community, there's nothing tangible that we can hang our hat on done yet. And so I was just saying that I think we should, it'd be good to get some points on the scoreboard as we go along, little things, and then maintain a long range plan. But, but I, I certainly agree with you 100% that um, CVPSA has, has um, sparked some very positive uh, activities and discussions, just haven't come to fruition yet, that's all. Well, you know, I think if we were on TikTok, we'd be called influencers. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been accused of that. <laughs> uh, I mean, we have gotten dispatchers certified. It's never happened before. And yeah. we have got a needs assessment done. So that's really good. All right. Any other discussion directly on this motion? All in favor, say aye. Wave your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Now, I also meant just to reassure the board that our fund balance is $42,685. Now, 30 of that we've committed to Televate study, but we had hoped to have a balance of around 10,000 at the end of June, and it looks like we're gonna have closer to 12. So that's good, we're, we're, we're on uh, target. All right. Donna, yes. the next year is 30,000. Does that come all at once or does that come quarterly? Or how does that come? They usually pay us quarterly. We have to invoice them starting in July. Okay. And so we usually get it when they get their payments after August. Yeah. Thank you. And that's one of the things that our assistant treasurer does do is she sends out invoices quarterly. And that needs to be initiated for us to get it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for your votes. Okay, well, we want to see, you know, we want them to use it and we want them to know, put our name on it. Yeah. <laughs> case or something. Donna, <laughs> right, David? Can... Yeah. And and on behalf of certainly the Barry City firefighters, and I'm sure I'm good to say it on behalf of the Central Vermont firefighters, thank you guys very much for uh, making this possible for all of us. You want to see videotapes with you out there using it? You know, it'll be, get, it, it's one of those things that's going to have heavy use. Okay, good. Uh, next on the agenda is a, a Televates RFP contract. Pardon, good, pardon me. Can I'm sorry, uh, Stephen, did you want to- didn't identify themselves and that, that's a chronic habit here. Oh, you're right, you gotta remind us. Thank you, Stephen. All right, so say our name, uh, Donna Bate. Uh, I'm probably the, I'm the, guilty of Donna Bates speaking. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Televate RFP contract update. Uh, Doug, work Donna, with can you. I interrupt? Oops. Sorry. Donna, yep. can you just tell me who spoke last? Was it Dave Rubicalba? Was, who, who was that Dave, speaker? Dave last spoke oh. saying how they were going to use it and thanking us for it. Yeah, introducing ourselves, we just all have to remind one another. It just takes some while to get in the habit. So we have the, the contract that actually started work on it. And indeed it would, it would help having this uh, if, they are, if the state funding comes out as we'll talk about in the next thing. Um, I send it out so you have it to look at it if you have questions about it, but the contract mainly is their proposal that you all had before was attached and that is the scope of work. Uh, Kim, question. I think the scope of work in their proposal is pretty vague, and I would like to see a specific scope of work, such as we did for the initial contract, so that we can determine whether they have actually met and done what they say they were going to do. And the proposal was fairly general, um, and I had a hard time teasing out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things that they were going to do. And, you know, what we did before was we had a, 
an executive director that could do that. I don't know who can do it under the present configuration because few of us have the technical skills to really parse it out and figure out what's going on. Uh, I don't know how to remedy that, but I think since you're the chair and you have put us in this position, you should do a draft of an itemized uh, scope of work and submit it to the board. Okay, we'll certainly uh, have a discussion on that. One, we felt that not only was the scope of work attachment of the proposal enough, it goes hand in hand with the need assessments and in 50 days it's gonna be done. And Doug has been the, is the oversight of the day-to-day -day deliverables and he has the expertise in the public safety communication field that I don't, but administratively over what's due, we feel that there's what we need in that contract. And that you're right, the need assessment, you did choose to go very much line by line, lots of detail, and that's just a different style of doing it. Uh, what's the board's pleasure? You want us to make an amendment to this contract? Well, I'll, I'll make an amendment, that, a formal motion that the chair and the vice chair prepare an itemized scope of work as an addendum to the contract and submit it to the board. Is there a second to that? Uh, I'll yes, second it. Okay. I'll second it. Justin is seconding it. A board discussion. I don't know about Doug, but uh, the proposal was accepted. The contract was awarded. This never came up in our discussion and I don't have the time to do it. I'm already putting a lot of hours in the public safety authority because we don't have any staff. So I, I just don't feel it's required. Uh, I mean, all I would want to know is how much work do we think this is? The reason I seconded it is because that's what I was curious about. We talking about an enormous amount of work to uh, create a line by line. Um, I, I well, not only work. that, but they're giving us with their proposal, they're giving us like twice as much work as they're charging us because they've already done so much within the need assessment. And they're working with the very people who are going to put it out, which is Doug Brin is here, Joe. Bill Fraser, uh, Brian Pete, they're all part of the input that the consultants will work with, just like they worked with before. So they should definitely know what's missing or not missing. They're going to go about the RFP in a segment. So here's what the radios look like. Here's what the various tower components look like. So the group can decide which part they can use given how much money we end up with. And they know that it's going to have to be amended once the actual money arrives and they want to use this RFP to send out. So uh, I, I don't, uh, yeah, go ahead, Doug, maybe you can help clarify. Are you uh, talking to me or Doug Hoyt? I'm sorry, probably both of you. Doug's got his hand up. So I'm going to let Doug Hoyt go first. We'll get used to this full names and say it yourself when you start speaking. Doug, you're muted. Doug Hoyt, you're muted. Yep. Doug Hoyt. <laughs> I'd be more than, more than happy to let Doug Brent go in front of me because he's much older than I am and has much more experience. Okay. Uh, Doug Brent, go ahead. You have the floor. Not older than he is, I don't think. <laughs> Introduce yourself, Doug. Doug Brent um, from Barry City Fire. Um, I don't have a an idea how much time it would take to write down or make a list of what you desire to have in the uh, scope of work. It's it's we probably have some of the information within. Mo actually, most of the information is in the Televate report currently. So I guess it would be just kind of um, honing it down to exactly what things that we want to see in the scope of 
um, work for the next um, phase of this program. And um, if, if we if we thought we had an idea on how much how much time it would take, um, I would. I'm not going to volunteer, so to speak, but I think that Joe and I could probably um, get together with Brian, excuse me, Brian uh, in Montpelier and put our heads together and probably come up with a few items to go in that um, scope. I would like to introduce that Rick Burt or from Televate is connected. He was in the waiting room and I got too involved in the discussion. And so perhaps he would like to explain, Rick, there are questions about not having Kim Cheney, particularly not having enough detailed in the scope of work by using the proposal. And would you like to answer that? I uh, yeah, have, I'd have to, you know, to repeat the question. I, I, I think we provided sufficient scope, but I, I'll be happy to answer a direct question. Sure. Uh, Kim is wanting uh, more detailed as he had before in the need assessment. And uh, myself and Doug, when we were working with you, felt that your proposal plus the need assessment lot laid everything out of what you were going to do. And he's asking for more step-to-step -step deliverables. Is that correct, Kim, Jeannie? Essentially, but if, if I think I'd be happy if Doug Brent and Joe and Brian Pete would get together and agree on exactly, and talk with uh, Rick Burke, but I'd like well, to know exactly what's going to be done and, uh, uh, you know, at least I don't need, I need an outline of the specific tasks that are going to be done and if there's a timeline for creating them, because I would like to, I'd like to know that somebody's keeping an eye on it. Well, it is. Doug Hoyt is keeping an eye on it. Uh, and I guess for for the fact that we're this is rather than to spend anyone's more time, I would rather have Doug and Joe and Brian spending time on the actual RFP material instead of laying out the task that they're actually doing and achieving them, so we can hit our target deadline of what was it June first? Yes. Yes. So, so if I may, uh, first, I, I want to. I'm, I'm very grateful to you know to the to the board and the and the membership for in, inviting us back to support um, the the next phase of the project. So I, I I didn't take the opportunity to thank you the last time because I I wasn't sure whether or not we would actually get to this stage. So I, I'm I'm really grateful to be here and and uh, you know, I have my commitment as we did in the first project that we'll give you a you know a, a high quality product that will support your needs and and you know if we need you know a, a, a little bit if we need some additional documentation on the steps we have to undertake i'll be happy to provide it you know we're very we're, we're, we're a very process driven organization so dom and i whenever work we do we work to a plan and 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 so we develop the plan in order to put the budget and the, and the proposal together so we kim you know as we worked the first project there was some additional detail in there that came in even after we had done our first project and you, you know first cut at the contract and we gave you some additional information so um you know if, if I'll, I'll certainly work with with doug and joe and whomever um if if the board needs some additional information on what we're going to do um the process is is you know is is fairly intricate um you know but um i mean you know, we we've done we've written a number of rfps and and so we, we we right now we have the good the, the good news is that during the first phase of the project we actually gathered a lot of data um, that is required in order to put the RFP together. So 
with, with Joe's help and Dom spent, you know, two, three days on site. We visited all sites, took a lot of photographs, documented um, um, a, a lot of equipment. Joe um, has, has done some additional documentation of what's on site. So, you know, and, and as we commit it, you know, we were, we're going to create a, 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 a structured, R, R, you know, RFP or RFQ, whatever we want to call it, that, you know, is compartmentalized, radio equipment, uh, site development, uh, radios, uh, radio consoles, so that, you know, and that a vendor could bid on all or portions of it. And, and however you want to do it, it's really up to the board how, how you want to strategize it. But our goal is really to, to, to create a comprehensive request or quote um, that that we could go, you know, that and, and again, uh, interacting with uh, the, the city of Montpelier, if their if their procurement department, you know, department needs something specific in there, we'll certainly provide that. Every every procurement department has a different approach, but you know, we're not really procuring at this stage, but it w would be we'd be fine with you know interacting with them to ensure that it satisfies their particular structure. Um, and so, you know, the first thing is really the documentation. So we've got. To, and we got to we've got to create a list of the, the, the information that needs to be documented and, and we're going to certainly follow the, the what we agreed in the report would be um, the priority ones so that'll that'll all be documented and and when we when we when we create the RP we're really creating a requirements a list of requirements this is what is required this is what we need and then we also create a table, a spreadsheet where the vendors would say we comply, we com we don't comply, or we comply with the with exceptions. So that when you finally get to the contract, you know exactly what they and and and, and what is being purchased and what they've committed to provide. And and that allows for a cleaner uh, contract development and management of the implementation. So. The steps in that process, you know, are, 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 are develop a draft, run the draft by you, you know, get approval on it, make some additions to it, and, 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 and then, you know, certainly um, present it um, um, to the board as we've agreed at the, you know, once it's completed. But uh, I, I can, you know, if there isn't sufficient detail in, in there right now, uh, I, I'm happy to work with, with Doug and, and, and you know, and, and, and expand it as may be needed. Uh, it, it, right now, that ha wasn't required, but um, if it's going to satisfy some, uh, some, you know, someone needs some additional information, uh, I'm happy to document it. Okay, uh, in order, I have Doug Hoyt's hand and then I have Joe's. Excuse me, so Donna, can you kill that? call-in user he is so yes. disrespectful yes thank you yeah that's much better uh your hand is up doug hoyt you're going to yes talk? now i was going to ask a question before i was being so kind to my friend doug brent but i guess i need to hear what it is that is perceived to be missing from the scope of work that you want to see added in We have a motion on the floor. I can respond to your Kim G. Oh, I can respond. All right, Kim. I think if uh, Doug Brent and the people he described are, my concern was I didn't know there was anybody technically that was deeply involved uh, with monitoring the progress. And if I'm, and I, I'm ha very happy with Televate's work, but without an executive director, there's nobody representing us in that process. So if if the people Doug mentioned are willing to undertake, if it were you know a, a role of monitoring the progress and keep us informed then that would meet my concerns. Uh, just Donna Bate, just to add to that, Kim, all the time we've talked about the RFP, it's been in conjunction of using the safety, public safety personnel in Barry, Montpelier and Capital Fire. So they're definitely right at the table working on this together. 
and wanting to see the deliverables being what they expect and what they need. Okay. I just wanted some reassurance of that, yep. that they're going to report back to us. Yes. Yes. If I may, I may I contribute. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, we we would definitely we would it, it would be a serious mistake if we didn't consult with and work closely with uh, with Joe and Doug and Jim uh, and 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 with under Doug's supervision. So the document says that we work under Doug's guidance supervision, but. But it is essential that we continue the relationship that we established during the first phase, you know, with 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 Joe and Doug and, and Jim and others, because you know it's that that they're the they're the lead, they're the technical leaders on your end, and the document that we create has got to reflect what we what we you know what we agreed to and, and draft it in in our in our you know in our assessment, but. Now you know it needs to fully you know identify the requirements that um, that each of you had, and they may have they they're going to evolve a bit, and they probably have evolved a bit because you know there 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 may not be a need for radios, or there may need to be a, a, a need for radios. But but we didn't get into those specific details in the RF you know in the assessment, so it's time to get into those now. So. You know, we we want you know certainly uh, as soon as we're we're through here, Dom and I uh, 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 you know began you know we began our, 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 our architecting the structure of the project and the RFP, but we need the input of of the community there, and so we're going to work very closely, um, you know, with you know with the you know the technical leadership that that we started with on the during the assessment phase. Okay, uh, Jim. You know, you're you're muted and you need to remember to identify yourself. Hey, Jim Ward from Barry. Um, my familiarity with similar processes would be the final document would be a draft that we would get to approve at that point. And if there were corrections or omissions or inadequacies would send it back before we approve the the payment of it so i would say that we have the final shot at it when they you know when they're ready to show it to us That's not and, correct and drafts along the way but it is ex, it is that speciality you have to have your public safety staff there they're the ones who really Absolutely. know at this, I'm just saying, at this Aaron, point Aaron, we're administrative more than technical experts yeah, that's what I'm saying. Absolutely, yes. there's going to be the the public safety officials will be involved in it. But from our involvement here at a board level, it, it's it either passes or it doesn't, and we send it back, and that, that will be our oversight at that point. I would imagine. I, I'm sorry, uh, Joe. I skipped over you. Your hand's been there. Please, your turn. Introduce yourself. Uh, Joe Alsworth. I just like to reiterate that uh, we absolutely myself including the team would, would absolutely enjoy working with Rick and Dom again. Um, we were very satisfied with the product that they produced. Um, they were very responsive and they listened. Um, I, you know, I learned a lot from uh, Dom and Rick and I, I look forward to continuing this. Um, I do ask the board in general that uh, <clears throat> the public safety of uh, people can't be mind readers and I need to know exactly what you're, you're, you're getting at, because if, if, if you have specific needs or wants, that, that really needs to come forward to Chief Hoyt, and then it needs to be disseminated down to Rick and his staff, but also to us. So I ask, please, we, we are not mind readers. If you have specifics that you are, are alluding to, we, we need to bring them out now so that we can vet them through efficiently. Thank you. Donna, I'm waiting to comment. Okay, uh, Stephen. Yeah, I, I'm just asking. Introduce yourself, Stephen. Oh, Stephen Whitaker. I'm wondering where, where and who made the decision that Doug Hoyt, we've got two competent attorneys on this board and who designated Doug Hoyt as contract manager? Because I, I feel like the folks that you're proposing to rely on are not on the board and they don't have a fiduciary obligation to the voters who vote who appropriated this money so i'm i'm concerned that 
I, I guess I want to know how the decision was made that Doug Hoyt was going to manage the contract. Okay, well, uh, two, two very strong pieces is one, he's an appointed by the Montpelier City Council. Two, he's a former police chief who started the dispatch system that now has the contract with Capital West. So he has one of the most expertise in the public safety communication fields of anybody on our board. And, and, and he's an officer of the board and that's who we've used in the past to deal with contracts. Well, no, this, but this board didn't decide to use him rather than one of the attorneys. It hasn't been up for discussion. I believe it's another so decision. So if the board members want to change that, then they are free to do so, Stephen. Anything else you'd like to comment on? Okay, uh, I see Kim Cheney's hand up. Kim Cheney. Um, I would not be willing to undertake that because I don't have the tactical knowledge to be useful at it. Yeah, it's not a legal approach actually this time, is it? Um, well, it's some okay. of both. So but we have a motion on the table. We've had a lot of discussion. The motion is to go after more detail. And, and in fact, I think you named me and Doug Hoyt to do so. I strongly encourage you not to vote for this motion. <laughs> okay, all in favor say aye. Well, all I'll opposed for, saying, I'm sorry, Kim? I'll vote for my own motion, but with a discussion, I actually, I'll withdraw it as long as um, the second will, because I'm satisfied that we do have some uh, technical participation. That... Okay, so uh, the second was Jim. Jim, do you agree to withdraw the motion? I did, didn't make the second on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Justin, Justin made the second. It was seconded by me and I, I agree to withdraw. Okay, all right. So motion's gone away. Now, along with this contract, we have an upfront payment of 50% of $14,857. This was really important in a short-term contract and also because we have such a clumsy way of getting our like our signatures and checks written. Last time they didn't get paid for months after they did all the work on a huge project. And I didn't want this to fall by the wayside. So I would entertain a motion to pay Televeg as per the contract, $14,857. So moved. Jim uh, Ward. Doug Hoyt second. Doug Hoyt, and second. Doug Hoyt second. And Kim Cheney has a question. Uh, well, I haven't seen an invoice, but that's typical in it. No, the um, invoice. No, I don't have an invoice. I'm having a request for payment. A warrant will be done. The invoice is in the contract. Well, I think we should upfront have, deposit should of fifty percent. We should have something that responds to it. I want them to get paid on time. I thought it was shameful the way we behaved last time, but I do. Well, think it was we under need, your control. <laughs> but I do think we need to make a good record. Okay. Well, we'll ask, we'll ask Rick to send us a printed invoice and it will go with the warrant where you do your signature so you'll all get it delivered to you electronically. Okay. Tonight at this meeting, we're asking for payment. We'll generate the invoice and we'll generate either the electronic signatures or we'll do the warrant at the Montpelier Police Station for signatures. Okay, that will satisfy me. Okay, so the motion is to make the payment. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Great, unanimous, thank you. And Mel, I, I'm sorry, maybe I should give you a chance to say you abstain. You don't have to abstain even whether or not you were around at the time. You're, you're muted. That's what I am assuming is that for the things that I think I understand, I'll vote. Okay. And for the things I don't understand or I don't have any background with, I'll 
abstain happily. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. The next item is dealing with the state house update. Uh, Doug Brent and Joe. Donna, can I just interrupt? Sorry, yes, can I'm you sorry, give me that number again? The, can you give me the exact number again? It's 14 sure. something it's other. Fourteen thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven dollars. All right, thanks. Yep. So would uh, Doug Brent, Joe Allsworth like to share what's going on in the state house? We have this wonderful recommendation from the public safety commissioner, and it's in the governor's budget for public safety infrastructure. And the commissioner is recommending at one point, $3.2 million to the capital region. Now, did everyone attend either Montpelier or Barry's city council meeting where the twin team did their presentation? Did anybody miss it? I'm just, you know, Brent could, Doug Brent can say more or less if everybody's already at least seen it once. Yeah. Jim Ward? Yeah, I, unfortunately, I was tied up both evenings uh, work and I had a class last night, but uh, Joe Allsworth pretty much updated me on what the presentation, how it went and thought it went quite well. Okay. Uh, Doug Brent, you want to comment? where things are now and how you felt about the council presentations? So I, um, can you hear me? Uh, it's Doug Brent, can you hear me, Donna? Yes. Okay, I just wanna make sure before I said too much. Um, I think that the presentations went well. Again, um, we put a lot of time into this and um, along with Chief Pete, um, for Montpelier, Joe kind of speaking for Barry City as well as for the Capital Mutual Aid where he's vice president and, and myself. Um, I don't think any of us were crazy about being the lead speaker on it. But as I joked at the council meetings, I got the short straw. So um, uh, I, I don't mind speaking about it. And, and, and um, I think we had some good questions and it was very reassuring uh, to know with the amount of work that we've put into the, this and in such a short amount of time um, working with Commissioner Sherling and his captain uh, Lance um, that uh, Lance Burnham that we um, we did a lot of work in a short amount of time uh, and and um, tried to get across what we we're needing to. And certainly the Televate report was an Im important part of our presentation. And we look forward to um, seeing what more information Rick has to offer and, and hoping that um, the legislature will look kindly on us and, and, and grant us the, the money that we need for um, our area. And I don't know if the, CVPSA had really ever looked at it in the same terms that we did, but a couple of those were what's the population that are served by both of the dispatch centers. It's it's about 75,000 people. It's about 750 square miles. And we have some real important um, uh, state infrastructure facilities that lie within our service territories. We have 27 major um, state office buildings and things, and as well as the Capitol um, that lie in the catchment area of our dispatch centers. And so we feel real strongly that um, we need these tools in order to move forward and, and do it in, in, in the right manner. And I think I've never made any secret right from the start about this. This is to me is all, all about firefighter safety and getting the best tools out there in the field for our field forces to use. I told you before, I told you the story. Uh, I have emblazoned in my mind until the day that I die doing CPR on a firefighter. And, and it's not fun. And if there's tools that can afford us to do a better job out in the field, then, then we need to do whatever we can to make sure that, um, that our um, field forces are protected that way. And, and, and I'll, I'll shut up and Uh, if there's anything left that Joe's got to add, uh, I'm sorry that Brian can't be with us tonight, but um, that's kind of where, where, where we're at. 
Okay, Joe, you want to make some comments? Uh, yeah, Joe Allsworth, Barry City. Um, no, uh, the chief pretty much covered it all. We have been working with the commissioner uh, in developing um, pretty much the, all the aspects that the legislature has asked us. Uh, we assisted in developing the application process that will lead to the uh, request for the funds. Um, we, we testified, we provided uh, plenty of literature, actually quite a bit. Uh, I think we may have overwhelmed the committee just a little bit, uh, Senate, the Senate committee, um, but we supplied uh, the, basically the same to the House committee also. Um, our, our, our project is head over heels uh, ahead of most of the state. Um, a lot of people haven't prepared a lot of people haven't uh, done the due diligence that we're doing. And uh, I have to use the Televate report uh, that was provided by Rick's staff that, uh, that that was really the gold standard that we used uh, to, to really to, to push this forward. So um, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> That's good to know. We spent a lot of time and money and Rick a lot of work. <laughs> Anyone else want to talk about uh, the state help portion of the capital region application? Uh, Kim, you have your hand up. Yes. Uh, after the meeting, I had a talk with Joe Aldsworth and Doug Brent, and I think I had two factual errors that they corrected for me. One, I understand there now is a contract signed between Cap Fire and the city. Uh, and second, I guess the Commissioner Sherling has made it clear that uh, PSAP is not involved anymore. Uh, I think his position has evolved on that point, but they make, they both make a difference to me. And so Joe and Doug, um, I found our post hearing conference helpful and I do want to set the record straight on those points. Thank you. Okay. I did write a letter in support of the state funding the capital region plan. I saw it totally aligned with the fact that we spent money on the need assessment to find out what we needed. The board approved an RFP to help implement that equipment. And we all knew that the cities were looking for money. We were told that public safety authority didn't have the capacity or the rating to get any kind of bond bank to help us do the financing. So we were out of the possibility of dealing with any kind of federal or state grant money. I felt it was in totally support of what the board had done up to that point and wrote a letter supporting them being funded. If the board men members object to that, I wanna hear it. If Stephen objects to it, that's just his opinion. So uh, this, I would just really like to confirm that that's where the board is at or not. Okay, uh, Justin, hands up, then Jim. Thank you. Um, so I absolutely support this. I made some comments at the Montpelier City Council meeting last night about how frustrated I was with this process that were unrelated to us securing these funds. I think this is a great idea. My frustration stems simply from the fact that I don't think CVPSA has been given clear guidance about what we're supposed to do. And it is, um, it is frustrating to not be told what we're supposed to do because it creates more work for everybody. Yes, yes. Uh, Jim, your hand is next. I just wanted to pass along a nice comment that I heard. Uh, Chief Brent told me of your telephone call to the to the committee, and he says she was just absolutely eloquent in the way that she presented it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Brent definitely had a much more prepared uh, presentation. <laughs> but between all of us and the different styles, and there were other regions there who had uh, people from their dispatch places or their firefighters, and it was very impressive. Uh, the committee may have started out behind in hearing enough, but that one day they really did good work. Uh, Kim Cheney, your hand was next. 
Well, look, if we get the money, um, everything's wonderful. If we don't get the money, I think CVPSA will have the task, which is to have a real regional authority that can uh, figure out how we're either going to get what the grant doesn't cover or if we don't get the money or none of it, then we got a whole new problem. But those things we can, it's a preview of coming attractions or perhaps not a preview, but time will tell. Okay. I don't see other, any other hands on this topic. The, the one that's underneath of it, uh, Stephen, you're muted, please. I'm trying to talk. Uh, is that I've been approached by the Public Safety Service, and this gets really confusing. The initials are the same. Stephen, you're not recognized. The Public Safety Service is also got an allocation before the Senate government ops. And the deputy commissioner approached me to write a letter of support from Central Vermont Public Safety Authority that we support getting free space on any towers they put up. Now, is there any reason I talked to Doug Brent as far as very far, they thought it was a good idea. I talked to Brian Pete, he thought free cell tower space was a good idea. We know that this is like, you know, I don't know, four or five years out, but it would help improve coverage. So it's a straightforward letter of supporting the public service department's <coughs> request for more money, money for more cell towers and that indeed we would greatly appreciate free tower space for land mobile radios. Uh, Kim Cheney, your hand is up. shouldn't be, so I'll take it down. Hey, Donna, I'm, okay. I'm still waiting to speak on the last topic. You mute me every uh, time I try Stephen, to... we, we, we're, this is a board discussion right now, Stephen. So... I'm sorry, Doug Brent and Joe Allsworth are not on the board, and you'll have... So I'm talking about the free tower space. Would the board feel more comfortable of actually get a motion to make this letter of support or is a general consensus enough? If you're looking for a motion, I'll- No, I, I don't need it unless you need it. <laughs> if I have your consent that this is along the path we want, I, I'm, I'm back to why wouldn't we want free tower space? <laughs> uh, but uh, Doug Hoyt, your hand is up. Doug Hoyt talking. Um... I need to be clear, the free, free space on towers is free space for who? Public safety uh, agencies. They're, they're negotiating with their vendor who's creating the towers that they're going to give free space to public safety entities to put what they need up there, which is most likely hand radios. All right, so it wouldn't be, wouldn't be on any towers that we have because we don't have any towers. No, it's on their new towers. They're doing this tower expansion. They have this huge contract. Um, it was some time ago when um, the Valley was at public safety. Yeah. He came to us and talked about that ATT had this commitment to outbuild more towers. Okay. And he saw it five years out, and that was like two years ago. <laughs> it's those towers. It's new cell towers they're putting up around the state because so they, they like, are increasing coverage for citizens. So and instead of charging public safety to put whatever they want up there, they would offer them free space. It doesn't tell you how much, it just is at least. I feel a change in attitude that we would want to cement in legislation. Okay, you answered my questions. Thank you. 
that make sense? Okay. Uh, Doug Cheney, hands up. Uh, can't, <laughs> too many buttons to push, yes. Members say your name. No, I don't have any further comments. Okay, all right. All right, so I'll go ahead and write this uh, letter. They appreciate our support, and I think it would be good for us to have a, a good relationship, improving our relationship with them. Donna, Thank you. Donna, Steve Whitaker still trying to speak. Let Stephen talk before he has a heart attack. Okay. If he promises to mute All right. <laughs> right, but besides public comment, whatever space we give the public to comment on what we're discussing is really up to the board. And so in, indeed, if you feel I'm not giving, people enough time in the no. general public tell me. Um, but for right now, Stephen, we're going to give you a couple minutes to talk about our previous discussion. I'm, I'm asking for the same benefit you give to Altsworth and, and Doug Brandt. They're not board members. You need to manage this in a fair and equitable manner. And I was you, calling you, on their expertise, Stephen. I, I asked them to speak. As well. I have expertise as well. You're misinformed about the towers that the Public Service Department is proposing. They were they were asking for 51 million for 100 new towers. The Institutions Committee voted them 21 million, and those towers won't be uh, bid out for construction until the sites are identified a year from now because they haven't even done the mapping of the cell coverage. So the the information about asking for approval. These are not AT&T's first net towers. They don't own those towers to grant you free space. That's not retroactive under the first net contract. But back to the other discussion about the um, the legislative business, the the chair was the chair of the government operations committee was befuddled on the ambiguity and the confusion between what the city of Montpelier, the city of Barrie, what Capital Fire Mutual Aid, and what Central Vermont Public Safety Authority. And she, she really was beside herself with confusion because there is no unified plan or proposal for who's doing what for whom. And that's very fundamental to the ex existence of this organization. And that's why adherence to the charter is so crucial. We've disregarded the charter on so many things that we have lost our way and we're okay, wandering Stephen, around. you've gotten off topic i'm sorry we're not going to get into the charter discussion Stephen, can you tell me the name of the chair for the minutes what what who what, what's the name of that chair jeanette white it's jeanette white okay yeah. j-e-a-n-e-t-t-e -T -T -E. all right next item is opening up the organizational meeting so we need to make a formal decision on, are we still gonna to continue to meet on the second Thursday? Or is it gonna be at 7 p.m.? Is it gonna be remote? So first let's talk about the day. Do people wanna keep the same second Thursday? Is that a thumbs up? Okay. And do they want to stay remote? Thumbs up. Okay, now just have a few things to share in that open meeting law packet from the Vermont League. There were several things about if you're fully remote that we do have to do. So I'd really like people who are willing to read into this really deeply because we have the option to, and the need to not only post printed, but we have a choice to pro to post our meeting so much printed and so much electronic if we're fully remote. It's very different. If we meet live, we have different kind of filing, posting of agendas. So when you make this decision, there is another decision that, that's happening. Some of it's more helpful, some of it's a less work, more work, you know, um, but it will fall on um, particularly the secretary and the chair, but even some of the rest of you. Well, those kind of decisions. So I, I guess I'm going to actually ask for a, a, a motion, but there's actually another part to it. So we have the day, the location, and we have what are our 
designated posting places. Right now we post in the two city halls a printed agenda and our two libraries. And in some situations when we're required a third, we do the senior centers in both Barrie and Montpelier. Electronically, we don't have any set place. Would you wanna define anything more than those two city halls, the two libraries, and one needed the two senior centers? Uh, Kim Cheney, is that hand really up? Yes. And Mel, then Mel's after you. Could they be on the website? They're, yeah, they're always on the website. Yes, okay. that is one of the places. I didn't mention that, but it's so automatic, yes. And uh, you mentioned the League of Cities uh, memorandum. I wonder if you could, is that on? Yeah, I sent it out. It, it actually says, um, oh, I have that fuzz, you can't, it has, says Vermont League of City and Towns model public record policy and guidance. And okay. they, what's, they come what's at- What's the date of that? Because I lost it. I'll resend it. I'll resend it. It was something we're going to have to study, even though there's some decisions we need to make tonight. Okay. There's a, a lot of subtleties within it. Okay, please um, resend it. But they have like a whole checklist and script for if it's a hybrid, if it's fully remote, just like they do live. So yes, I'll real resend it. Some of the pieces I feel like we at least if we can make the the date, location. And we, as we did, we're going to be remote. Then that's three biggies. We designate if we can designate, agree on posting places. That would be good for tonight. Some of the other things that I'm going to bring up, I think, may take a little longer discussion. One is they suggest you really appoint and designate someone custodian of all the records, and that custodian would then be the one to be the point person for any records request. No matter who gets it, it would then go to that person and that person would assist and know what the rules were and help dealing with that request. And they become then the catalyst of our reference point and almost our in-house expert. Now I did talk to Justin and I think on a weak moment, he said, oh, I think I might do that. <laughs> Are you still th thinking that way, Justin? Uh, uh, I, I'm happy to do it. I, I, I do have some logistical questions insofar as like, if you're asked for records that are not in your possession, is the idea here that that particular person would then email all the relevant parties on the committee and say, hey, look, I need you to form me, forward me all emails on this particular topic. I'll compile yeah. them and get them to the, yeah, that's fine. I'll do it. You, you either direct them to send it to you or you direct them where they go, but you, you help yeah. them. And likewise, if they ever get anything direct request to them, Instead of them personally doing it, it should go through the custodian so that you know what's going out and you're keeping track of it. Here came the request. Here's the response. Because mm -hmm. even though it's our personal records in some way, it's still under the umbrella of public safety authority. So we need to have some guidance and assurance that what went out and what didn't go out. And people need okay. help sometimes figuring it out. I'm, I'm happy to do that. I am going to make one request, which I will send out by email which is that everyone create a separate email address for CVPSA business, which is something that I'm planning on doing to just create a Justin Dreschler underscore CVPSA secretary at Gmail email address. I think that's gonna make everybody's life a million times easier if we just correspond with CVPSA business only through your CVPSA email. It's very, very easy to just create another Gmail address and Gmail profile. Um, so that would be my request, which you don't have to do, but I'll be really mad if you don't. So, <laughs> and you're going to put that in an email okay. and remind us, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. All yeah. right. So, I got all involved in some of these st uh, steps. And, Mel, I skipped back over you, although I put your name down here to call on you. So, you have space to talk. Just back to the subject of where to do it online. I know Barry City posts practically all their meetings agendas on Front Porch Forum. I don't know if that's something that would be of interest. Certainly. Right. So for the minutes, we're deciding, oh, Kim, you're back? Or is your hand still up? 
Well, I'm in favor of it on the front porch. It would have to be in both cities, of course. Well, you can put it on front porch and just mark all the cities. I mean, they, you know, they'll go to all of them. Yeah, I'm not sure how it works, but. Yeah. Okay, so we have this second Thursday. I forgot the time. I like seven o'clock because it means for once I get supper. The city council, you never get supper <laughs> done. Uh, but what's the time preference for the board as a whole? We had been 6.30 and I moved it to seven. Do people like seven? Does it work? <clears throat> okay, cool. So second Thursday, 7 p.m. remote. And Justin has volunteered to be our custodian of our records. All right. Let's see, now I had some other notes. What else do we have? Oh, we're gonna, okay, so, and we're gonna post it at the two city halls, our website, of course, which we do, website. Two city halls, libraries, uh, senior center when we need to, and a front porch forum. Um, Donna, is there a Barry Senior Center or is it just Montpelier? Barry and Montpelier. I do the same in both cities. Yep. There are some of our, uh, go to our charter, some of our hearing uh, requests three places instead of two. Okay. Oh, we also need to decide on our standard format for our video. Right now, we are using ORCA. We have had requests to also use Zoom and keep our own recordings. I have opposed this because it means once you make a record, you have to keep it up to a year and you have to make it available to the public. So we need to decide as a board what our format's gonna be for our recordings. And then if indeed, if it stays with Orca, they put it on YouTube, it's there forever. If we do it any other way, then we're gonna to have to keep the records. What, what's the board's pleasure? I'd like to comment on this when you get a chance, Don. Steve Whitaker. Uh, sure, uh, Justin's hand went up and then Jim. Does anybody know what the consequences are if a hard drive fails when you're keeping one of these records? Suppose I just keep these things and I keep a hard drive and a backup and then the hard drive fails. Um, anybody have any idea? It's a sad, sad day, but there you are. I don't know what you do. I mean, okay. I, I'm just wondering le legally what the consequences are, as long as there's no ill, like bad faith. Well, I mean, the, the base lifelong records are still minutes, and minutes are about the only thing that's really important are your motions, and that's mm -hmm. what you hold accountable to. So minutes are the Bible, so to speak, mm -hmm. and they are kept long term. Recordings have one year life. So that was good. I only found that out more recently. Um, that's a one year life, one year and a day from the time they're recorded. Um, and the, and these, these rules will last for a year, correct? And I, like the I rules we're adopting so. right now. The rules we're adopting right now is what I mean. Like we go back next year and we readopt whatever rules we want to adopt, correct? Yes, yes. Oh, I mean for us. And we can change them, right. but but we but yep. the idea of your organizational, you sent out a tent, this is what you're gonna do this year. And as always, the board has opportunity to change it. But right. I'm still back to once you have those recordings, it's like Brent did some recordings and somehow we have to get them from him and save them somewhere. And I know I don't want to be the one. I, I don't yeah. want to put it on my computer. It's definitely an ongoing concern. I think that the, um, I would do this. I, I, I'm happy to do it. I'm not going anywhere, but it, it is tricky because there is no, the problem that I have with this is the same problem that Donna has, which is that Stephen, I, I am going to strangle you. Can you mute yourself just for a hot second, man? The, um, so the problem that, the only problem I have with this is that CVPSA as an entity doesn't have some place, Steve, I just can't hear myself, man, you're killing me. I, um, I, yeah. CVP, no, I'm good. CVPSA as an entity doesn't have a good place to store these for the long term. If this is Montpelier City Council, Montpelier City Council is gonna stay forever. 
Um, but we don't even have a place to physically store these. Again, I'm happy to do this as long as I'm on the committee. Uh, yeah, but it's if you're not, not hard here, for me, but it's a, but it's a legitimate gotta, concern. I think it's a yeah, legitimate I mean, concern is what I'll say. Someone's got to take it from you if you leave. Yes, and that's I think that's a very real concern. Even yeah. though I don't think this is a difficult thing to do, I think the 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 idea that it could be difficult is a uh, is legitimate. Right. And okay, other board discussion around whether to just depend on Orca or to do Zoom. Uh, Jim? As you know, I've been a, a huge supporter for a long time of access to public records and following the rules. But at the same token, at the same time, if we are creating official requirements that are put upon us legally, I think we have to be very cautious. I would suggest that we post them in very identifiable places that we've done in the past that, that meet the minimum requirements by law. We do not want to create any additional records that are not required that we, that we will have to make publicly available to people, that we do not have staff. As Justin just pointed out, we don't even have a home. So they're going to be doing the search warrant at your house, Justin, when they <laughs> look for the stuff. So I would just say that I'm all for having the meetings posted any place anyone wants to post them. But from an official requirement from us, we need to be, number one, cognizant of the fact that the, the work is being done by volunteers. Someone has to go put that poster up on the uh, senior citizens hall in Barry and the, in the libraries and and that takes time and and as you well know Donna you, you know yeah, you're, I've you're been doing it. Yep. it you're taking the brunt of it so I would say from this official annual declaration of how we're going to meet the public records law we only include the bare minimum that's required by law okay and that, but Jim, that goes along with tapes as well okay and, and yeah recordings particularly what we're talking about uh, Orca, there's a disagreement with Stephen that as far as any advice received that's written or from the league, we're only required to record it. We're not required to have a contract with the person recording it. We're not controlled to have custody and control. It goes to YouTube and lives forever, <laughs> nearly. So uh, if I understand, if, if is my understanding correct that Vermont leagues of cities and town recognizes that orca recording on meetings meets the minimum requirements of the law. Yes. Yes. And I suggest we do no more than that. And not only that, but if you go to YouTube, you don't need a link. You just put in CVPSA and yeah. then a bunch come up and then you put the date. I mean, it's really accessible, which is what I like. And, and there's plenty of public computers around libraries and whatever where people can find it. Yes. Uh, I, the one thing I don't have, which I'd hope to have by tonight, uh, from Orca was the cost of getting copies, because it is cost. It would be charged to make an actual copy to own it versus to view it. I'm, All right, I'm waiting uh, uh, St Stephen, you want to talk? Uh, Kim Cheney, you want to talk before or after Stephen? I don't know when you put your hand up. Kim, you're muted. I don't watch Orca. The discussion has answered a lot of my questions. I didn't know you just clarified that anybody can sign up and get it. Yes. Get a recording. It's literally uh, the initials. I was really impressed. CVPSA, poop, up at pops. But is there any reason why you as host couldn't just record and if anybody wants to review it, they could, because we used to, I used to get um, a notice from Zoom that um, I could get the recording by, um, with, with the, a link. The problem with Zoom is it becomes individualized. It's not open to the masses like your website, that you have to modify it and, and provide a link to each individual to come in and look at that copy. And not only that, but once you have that copy, Kim, which we've been talking about, is then you have to maintain it and keep it available up to a year. Okay, well, I'm happy with uh, YouTube then. All right, 
All right, I'm going to let Stephen talk now if all the board is done. All right, Stephen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm concerned that uh, the league is not the, the last word on archiving requirements. I've been in discussions with the state archivist, and I've never heard there's a one-year sunset on records retention. The body, legislative bodies are required to file a records retention plan with the Secretary of State and have it approved. And that has different lengths of time for different categories of records. But there's never been a one-year disposal uh, window on uh, videos that I'm aware of. Yes, but it came out this year, Stephen. I'm looking at the statute and there's nothing saying that one year. Okay. Uh, okay. And now I'm also looking and it says the legislative body shall record. It does not say you can rely on ORCA. ORCA and I have had conversations and they are under no obligation and nor do they want to be to make public records copies. So the way I read the law is that CVPSA is required by law to make a recording and then you could put that as most legitimate organizations do, put that up on your website so people can download it at their own pleasure. This is not as complicated as you're making it sound, but I, I am willing and intending to pursue this. And I think it's not appropriate for you to be giving legal advice to uh, a, a board and maybe guiding them to make decisions that are not consistent with law. All right, Stephen, anything else on this topic? All right, I will send the email. I got a direct email from Megan Wheaton from the state administration. And she sent a statement of the one year and a link to the big website. And she said it was relatively new. I also have an email which I'll forward you from the Secretary of State, uh, Jenny Poster, P O. P-R-O-S-S-E-R. -S -S -E and she also talks about whatever <laughs> format you, you decide to record it in becomes your standard format. So if we assign ORCA as our vendor, then we could even hunt up their technical language of what kind of video format they have. That becomes our standard format. And then whatever copies you make is in the standard format. Even making a copy of a standard format can be costly, but definitely you do not have to change your format to, to that which the person requesting a copy that's not standard. You don't have to do that. I'll send that to confirm what I'm telling you. So for now, we're going to accept ORCA as our vendor. Jim Ward? Madam Chair, I believe this question's been asked and answered. Um, I recall a motion that we were going to seek an opinion from the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Town and then abide by their decision in terms of their legal advice on this. So I, I think you've already done what we agreed to do and we move on. Okay, uh, but I, I do wanna send those two other pieces out. Um, but if indeed what I've said so far answers that question, no, that's fine with me. Okay. No, in terms of in terms of whether or not Orker is an adequate um, representation of recording the meetings per per the law, Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns has said that it is. Yes. So that's good. Someone wants to challenge that, have at it. Spirit Courts on State Street. No. Okay. Uh, I think I think I've covered it. Uh, I do want people to. I'll be sending out the model for public records that they puts out and look at it and make sure we're hitting all the check marks. Some of it's a little awkward because it's definitely a change in operations. It's getting a little more formal, making sure we say our names when we talk and a and few other things like starting the meeting with a, a format. Uh, so we're going to need everybody's help to do that. Now we need to elect officers. <clears throat> we have a chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. The nominations are open. Everybody jump at once. I nominate Donna as chair. You want, to, you want to do a slate, Jim? Do I want to do a slate? Yeah, um, right now. Sure. Uh, I guess I should explain maybe for Mel is that uh, 
Mel, that I'm chair and Doug Hoyt is vice chair of the board and Justin has taken on the, the job of being secretary. And I, uh, we've had a treasurer, Bev Hill, and she has chosen not to continue. At one point, we had someone, Brent Householder, who was going to do that even though he wasn't on the board because he, the treasurer can't be on the board. And I have not found somebody to be on the treasurer, something I'll keep working on. And the rest of you also can reach out to anybody with accounting skills. Um, it would be great. Right now, tonight, we have chair, vice chair, and secretary. I move the current offices uh, be the slate for next year if they're willing. Okay, anyone else? All right, all in favor of that slate? Say aye, hand raise. Aye. Any opposed? Raise your hands. Are you raising your hand up? Did you raise your hand against it? <laughs> yeah. he, he, he was slow on the intake. Okay, so, so that's done. That was a psychological thing, no, no problem. Now, uh, St Stephen was telling me that we're behind on one of our appeals. And so maybe we missed some form formality. We did talk about some. Uh, Stephen, would you help me out? Because you came back with uh, that, indeed, we hadn't answered one of the violations, but it was also yes. tied with requests for some email copies. So help it's me out. I, Stephen Whitaker, it's an open meeting law violation related to the recordings in my request for same, and it was required to have the board meet within 10 days and make a response within 10 days, and I reminded you of that several times and you ignored it and said you'll deal with it on the 14th as if the law didn't apply to you, but it's clearly a 10-day turnaround, and you knew that because city council scheduled two special meetings to address similar issues related to recordings. And you're on the city council, so you can't claim you didn't know that the 10 year, 10 day deadline requires a special meeting. Okay, so this is about the recordings. And you're correct that we haven't done a motion, but we did talk about it at the March 10th. They asked for more information and they got more information. So we either can have a special meeting, talk about it now, or one of the option is failure of the public body to respond to a written notice of alleged violation within 10 calendar days shall be treated as a denial of the violation for purposes of enforcement of the requirement of this sub chapter. So you would, if indeed we're over the 10 days, you would assume that we're denying it. However, you were at the March meeting when we discussed your challenge about our recordings and the board sought advance advice about it and you didn't have any objections when we left that meeting. So I'm sorry I didn't clarify that you were giving us an extension, but we, but you were right there. When we were talking about it. No, I, filed, uh, I filed the violation after that meeting. No, we talked about it at that meeting. If you go back we to the obligation to record, I didn't file a no notice of violation until after the meeting because you didn't produce a recording that I asked for. Okay, uh, but we okay. <laughs> All right. Can I can uh, I just get some? So, can I just jump in here for the minute's purposes? Go for it, Justin. I just want to make sure that I'm correctly clarifying this, Stephen. What meeting? So February 10th meeting was not recorded and you filed an open meeting, and to stop me if I'm wrong, you filed an open meeting law um, violation uh, notice or whatever you want to call it. And we did not respond to that notice by calling a special meeting within 10 days. Am I correct that that's what you're saying? I don't have the date of the notice. I presume the chair has that. I believe it was copied to the whole board. I just need to know what meeting was it the February 10th? It was the February or the March meeting that you're All saying. All our meetings violation. have been recorded, Justin. The February. Are you saying the, 
I believe Brent gave me the recording of the February meeting. Okay. So can you just clarify? I would. Can I you think just clarify your situation. Okay. I think you rely on the papers. Okay. Then I'll, I'll just reference. I'll reference your papers. I don't have those at my. He was right protesting now. that we weren't using Zoom. Okay. Could you, Donna, could and you I speak? answered him that could he had speak? attended that meeting and that his request for the MP4 copies were discussed. He also demanded that CPS, and I did uh, copy people on this, um, demanded that CPSA make a backup recording using Zoom features. I quote the statute of state statute 315 to 320 does not require us to make backup recordings, does not require us to convert public records that exist in one electronic format to a different electronic format. And then I go on. So the next thing I hear, and that's one of the other things within this model from the league, it has a structure to help us understand what you're trying to tell us, Stephen. Sometimes your requests come very short of information, uh, but this was responded to. And then you want an appeal, right, to the head of the agency. No, you're, you're, you're confusing the request and the open meeting appeals to the head of the agency only apply to public records requests. Notice of open meeting violations are what have the 10 day response time by the body. That's what requires the special meeting. So okay. the fact or that- Or by default denial of it. You do not have to have a meeting. Oh yes, you could fly in the face of the law. I would, wouldn't be surprised no, no. at all. I'll send you a copy of the statute. I have a copy of the statute. Well, then read it. So, Justin, if you understand uh, exactly what Stephen wants us to do at this point, I'll be can you just can you? I, I, all I want is just clarification for the record. Can you just, um, Stephen, just state your um, area grievance once again, concisely, please? I am uh, looking up the notice sent to Donna. Um, open meeting log. I'm surprised that you don't have it. I'm sure I do. You don't have it. I just, I just want you to be. I just want to be clear. As uh, dated March I just 10th. want to be very clear. Can, dated March 10th. You were informed, and I'm quoting. You were informed tonight that the law requires recording meetings and that Orca Media had recommended making a recording regardless of whether Orca makes a recording for broadcast. You were also informed in email that I request and require a copy of the recording and that YouTube does not allow download for offline viewing. You repeatedly refused several requests tonight to hit the record button. You had prior to the board to that Orca asked that the board not record due to interference with their recording. Despite these events, you failed to make a recording as required by law and in our, are in violation of open meeting law. Yep, I'm reading that email also yes. right now. So it's an open meeting law violation. And you're saying that we needed to call a special meeting within 10 days of that email to discuss and respond to it, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. And you're saying that because we did not do that, that we are again in violation of the open meeting. Correct. Got it. So, so it's like a, a one is a one is the open meeting law violation, and the one is failure to comply with your um, with your notice of an open meeting law violation. Got it. So I just like so Stephen, I just want to clarify if a, every time you put in one of these requests of an open meeting law violation is the is your reading of the law that we then have to meet within 10 days to discuss this, your claim of an open meeting law violation. And then I'd just like to ask Donna if that's her understanding of the law. You can read the law yourself and you it's uh, it's self-evident for it, the plain language. 
Yeah, I'm just I'm just asking for the minutes so that I can get your interpretation, and then Donna can tell me her interpretation. Well, I'm surprised that Donna's on the Montpelier City Council, which has had the benefit of council and has complied with the law. So the fact that she thinks she doesn't need to for this organization is baffling to me. All right, I think I got what I need from you, Steve. Thank you. Back to you, Donna. Okay, uh, I can actually send out this statute because luckily, Bill Fraser cut it out for us and the city council got it. And we know we don't have to meet that indeed, number two under the statute talks about the written notice of alleged violation and public body meeting within 10 days. And it has two parts to number two. But number three says, as I read to you, failure of the public body to respond to a written notice of an alleged violation within 10 days shall be treated as a denial of the violation for purposes of enforcement of this requirement of the subchapter. So I'll send this out to you, it's, but it's right there. And indeed, I think after trying to have two special meetings to appease Stephen, I would doubt that Montpelier City Council will have a third. It could, but it has a choice not to. But I think for now, it would be really behoove the board in order to move off this, if indeed by reading the letter from the Vermont League, that if you feel satisfied that we're not required to do a Zoom additional recording, then make a motion as such and deny the appeal. Then it's just a clean slate and we're off again for another one. Uh, Jim Ward. That's exactly what I was going to do, Madam Chair. I move that we deny the appeal uh, pursuant to the advice that we had from Motley's cities and town and in accordance with the statute that says a uh, failure to respond within 10 days uh, is the same as a denial. So we have met our obligation. I'll second that. Uh, maybe I need to understand your motion, Jim. Uh, are you saying that you feel with from the advice of the league, we are not required to have a backup Zoom recording? And that was the essence of the complaint. Steve wanted me to start recording the, with Zoom, and I said no, because I didn't want to be responsible for that recording once it was created. So the, the violation is all around us allowing ORCA to be our recording and not using Zoom. There seems to be a number of different things that, that he was citing, but what I gathered out of it was the Failure to record it in accordance with the law, which Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns has said we are in accordance with the law. As okay. as I, that they are, okay. in fact, our legal counsel. They are attorneys that are advising their members. I'm sure it wasn't the secretary that, no ill reflection on the secretary, but I suspect the person that advised you was probably had been down this road before. Um, and so, and the second part of it is whether or not we, um, called an emergency meeting to um, to address his complaint. And the law is very specific that says that if they choose to not call a special meeting, that's deemed to be the same as a denial. Okay. So what I'm saying okay. is that I move that we deny them the appeal based on the advice from, uh, on both appeals based on the advice from Vermont Leagues and Cities and Towns Legal Council, or just Vermont Leagues and Cities and Towns, uh, and the cite, citing of the statute that says that failure to hold a meeting in 10 days is the same as a denial. Okay, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, I just wasn't clear. Justin, no, that's fine. wasn't. Okay. Is Everybody else clear on the motion? Yeah, essentially what we're doing is affirming our previous denials. Yes. All right, any further discussion on this motion? Yes. All, right. All in favor say aye. Doug has a 
Great. Any days? What? Good. All right. It passed. Sure. Right. I got one question on our, our last last topic. I'm not sure resolved fully the uh, concern or yeah concern regarding the format of the recording, whether it's done by Orca, which converts to YouTube, or whether we have to somehow do something with Zoom. I, I don't think the law requires us to do it in any format, just requires us to have it recorded. That's right. That's right. In fact, it even lists different ones you can choose in the model policy. So by us making the statement that we're choosing Orca for now, doesn't mean it can't ever change, but for now, as our vendor, and it's is, done. And that there, becomes our standard format for recordings. And is That's there done. any knowledge, is there any knowledge on anybody's part that says that um, we have to have a contract with Orca? Nope. Nope. Again, Mom Perry went through that. No contract is required, no custody, no control. And a person who is requesting the record cannot dictate to the custodian what format the record will be. No. And I did ask Orca. They will make copies, but they will charge. So we could we would go to them and say, we need this copy, but we don't, we don't do it until we know what the price is and we get paid for it and then we get the copy. So if they make a request for a copy and it comes from Orca and it costs $25 for the recording, then the person that is requesting yes. the record has to pay the $25. Yes. It doesn't come out of the public no. fund. And they have to pay it before they get the copy. Sounds good to me. And, it, and I am still going to be seeking an estimate, so we have that in our file as an orientation, although it won't be exact. But that's what I've asked Orca to give me. Not only how much it would cost for a copy, but how long to get it. So then we can have that within our records, and, and so we can set up the correct expectation of anybody requesting records. Fine. I, I, I like to okay. down on this. Okay. Uh, Stephen, you wanted to say something short you haven't already said? Don't repeat yourself, please. Yeah, it, it, it's not under any, uh, it's not obliged by law to maintain the records, to preserve the records, or even to make copies available. And they, the Secretary of State's office said only if there was a contract would be allowable as an alternative uh, recording strategy. And that's when I asked if we had a contract, and you said, no, we don't. Neither does the city. I also want to point out that Barry City keeps a copy uh, in their own files in addition to going to the public access station because they adhere to the law in Barry. And keeping, preserving a copy, the legislative body shall record. It doesn't say shall assume ORCA's doing it for them and shall assume it takes care of our compliance or absolves us of our compliance. It, you're, you're really playing, playing fast and loose here. Okay, Stephen, uh, the, the board has already made a decision. They voted on the issue before them. The, anything else that's different than what's been said from anybody? All right. Any other business that wasn't on the agenda that somebody just thought of? All right, otherwise we can adjourn. Thank everybody for their patience. I will Thank make you. sure you, you get a, another copy of that model of public records and, and try to spend some time with it. Yeah. It's very interesting, very helpful. Thanks to Rick Burke for showing up tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah, and Thank hanging you. out. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And thanks again for uh, supporting uh, us, uh, Taliban, and um, our continued support of CVPSA and Central Vermont Public Safety Community. Oh, that's okay, Rick. Don't worry about it. You're going to end up paying. It's going to cost you. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. All right, I, folks. <laughs> good, good evening. Good evening. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you all for supporting the training program. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's good.
Good night. Who do I make that out to? Good night, to? everyone. You, uh, Jim, that's a good point. You got a, a <clears throat> invoice for me? Can you give me an invoice? To put with uh, the signature? Yeah, I can arrange something. I, I mentioned it to the chief, what, how they wanted to do it. He wanted to run it by the um, um, finance manager at City Hall. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's something. It's coming from three or four sources. So. Even if it's just on their stationery. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sure they and, can do something. We and, just didn't know whether which pool and, of money gets mixed together with who, because it's coming from several directions. But well, if uh, they have a vendor, maybe they can get an invoice from the vendor, and we can see their share sorry. and our share. That would be the best, even. But something that we can put with our signature. We'll, we'll get we'll get back to with some specifics on it. I don't know if the chief okay. has left. And I'm telling Rick the same thing. Once want an invoice. Um, I I have sent directions to our. Uh, Finance manager to create it and submit it tomorrow. But before we go, because uh, because the deputy chief and, and chief Brenner are still on, um, Dom yeah. and I talked today, and we're going to be reaching out to you, gentlemen, to get uh, to get your input to get this rolling along. So um, uh, it will be following up if not tomorrow, uh, not later than Monday. So uh, okay, um, Good. we'll get an email out to you, and we want, certainly want to begin the engagement right away. Uh, there's no right. time to lose. Uh, we waited, you know, we've waited too long. So we're, we're, uh, we're off and running and, and the sooner we can, um, you know, have a meeting of the minds, uh, uh, the better. And, and, okay. uh, and That's I good. Doug, Doug Hoyt is gone, but we'll certainly invite him to the show. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. All Bye. Right. Rick, Monday's better for both of us. Friday's Monday's not good. good for, yep. Okay. Monday's good. I'll, uh, um, I, I'll, uh, I'll get with Dom tomorrow and we'll send you some options, uh, and times. Thank okay. you, sir. Dude, everyone. Thank you, Donna. Thank you.